Hello, Sid Roth, an investigative reporter here with Office of Vera. What could possibly cause a woman that graduates, the top woman in her college, and has a successful business, to give it all up for miracles? This is an unusual show. You see, most shows, you just sit back and kick off your shoes, and you want to be, you say, so entertain me, and if I don't like you, click. I know what you're thinking, but it's not like that. You see, this is an interactive show where what we talk about right here will occur in your home. Literally, it'll go from us into your house. Watch, you'll see. Hoffa, you were, you're from Brazil and you were an exchange student, uh, what, how old, 15? When or? I was 15 years old, yes. And you went to, of all places, Las Vegas. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, you were mm -hmm. a, a Catholic, I guess, or a yes. Christian at that Catholic time. Catholic background, Catholic, yes. and uh, you went into a Protestant home and yes. you saw something you'd never seen before. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, it was a great experience because um, I went to a church that was very uh, spirit-filled and so when I got there, somebody asked me, well, have you ever prayed, you know, receiving Jesus as your Savior? And I go like, well, I'm already a Christian, you know. I didn't know you had to pray to receive Jesus in your heart. But I was like, yes, if I have to do that prayer, of course I would do it. I would love to do it. So I did. And then right after that, I saw some people just like praying tongues, or like, you know, like tongues that I never mm -hmm. heard before. I was like, what is this other language, you know? Now, I remember coming from a Jewish background. Yes. I mean, we Jews and Catholics have a lot in common. And, <laughs> and when I heard people speaking a language they'd never been taught, I thought that was the neatest thing I ever heard. Were you freaked out or did you think it was neat? Um, I don't know, I think both. <laughs> I thought it was neat, but I was like, what is this thing? And I've, I yeah. had never seen it before. So, but I was curious about it. And I was like, if this is God, then I want mm -hmm. it. And uh, so I remember that I asked somebody there to pray for me, because I was like, well, do you, are you sure this is God? And they were, they were like, yes, it's in the Bible, you know? And uh, I'm like, okay, so I want him. So they prayed for me. I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, you know, and I started speaking other tongues too. And, um, and some, just a couple of days later, actually, I think it was more than days, I think a couple of weeks mm -hmm. later, they were gonna have a mission trip to Mexico. And I was like, I wanna go to this mission trip. And in that mission trip, I had my first uh, encounter like with God and seeing like his power to heal. Tell me about that. It was great. Uh, there was a lady there that had a very, you know, severe injury in her back. She couldn't like bend over. Mm -hmm. She had like so much pain. And, um, and I was translating for them, you know, like Spanish and English. And, uh, and so I got to, to, to see like, you know, where the people that are sick and, you know, what they wanted and what they need healing for. And I was like, you know what, instead of translating for this one, I want to pray for her. I, I want God to use me. And uh, so I touched her back. Now, wait a second. When you touched her back, did you really think she was going to be healed? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> no, but I wanted to. I wanted to experience, you know what I'm yes. saying? I was just curious. I was hungry right. for God and I wanted to experience. So I was like, I'm going to touch her back and let's see what happens. So I didn't even know how to pray for the sick. But I, I, I you know, some people that were close to me, mm -hmm. they were just saying, come Holy Spirit, you know, come with your healing power. And I'm like, just repeating, you know, like hearing mm -hmm. them and repeating what they're saying and the lady got healed and she started to cry I mean first I didn't know that she was getting healed she was just crying she was weeping sobbing and her son started to cry too and then she started to jump up and down and bend over and I'm like what's happening and she goes like you know Fogo 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 you know and she's like talking about this fire that was going through her body and she was healed so I thought that was the neatest thing and um well, I mean, you're still a kid but you were really a kid back then <laughs> I know I was 15 and then I had to go well so then I spent a year in Las, about a year in Las Vegas was 10 months approximately and then I had to go back to Brazil so when I went back to Brazil I decided to go to another church that Protestant church you know I want like something more spirit filled mm -hmm. and um, more than the place I was going to before and um and, but then I wasn't seeing many miracles and I wasn't seeing what I saw in Mexico. And I was really hungry for God and I, I was really mm -hmm. hungry to see more healings happening. And, but I didn't see healings for years, for almost, I don't know, about seven years. I, I just didn't see mm -hmm. healings. But, well, I saw like maybe cold, you know, somebody that was, yeah. had like a fever or, you know, cold getting healed. But I want to see like the lame walk, you know, the death sure. here, you know, the blind. Well, that's what scene. we read about. Yes. That, that, you know, I believe that's normal. And I yes. believe what most people yeah. settle for is pathetic. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, if you read this in the Bible, Lord, you know, like if you did this before, then you got to do this now too. I believe it, you know. So I was like, Lord, just just use me, you know, to to take healing to people. And Lord, let me, if you cannot use me, if for some reason, because at that time I really thought like I was going through some issues, like can God use me, you know, like, or is just mm -hmm. for like prophets, you know, pastors, you know. Right. But then I was like, but let me, let me just be able to see a Lord. But then later on, understood that the Lord wants to use every single one of us, you know, independent of what you do. Did you, you catch carry that? Hoffa just said, the Lord wants to use you. Wait till you find out the miracles happening from Hoffa. They're liable to happen right now to you. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. Hello, it's Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Hoffa Severa. She's from Brazil, and she has just a hunger to see miracles. She saw miracles as uh, a youngster on an exchange program uh, in Las Vegas, of all places, uh, and, and they went on, on a trip, and she actually prayed for someone, and they, she saw a miracle happen. Then she went home. She even went to what are, quote, spirit-filled uh, churches where they're supposed to have miracles, but they didn't have any miracles. Then she found out about a man by the name of Randy Clark who walked in miracles, and that hunger for the miraculous that she had almost felt I just, I, I don't know if I'll ever see it again. It quickened and she became a translator for someone on his team. And what did you see, Hoffa? Well, I started to see like a lot of miracles, and miracles that I've never seen before, even when I did that mission trip to Mexico. Because in that trip where I was translating for somebody of Randy Clark's team, uh, I saw a deaf person being healed, and I saw um, a kind of, it was a bump, kind of a mm -hmm. tumor that somebody had uh, like on his wrist disappearing as I was interpreter for, for someone in that trip. And uh, after that, I just fell in love with the ministry. You know, I fell in love with God's power to heal, and I wanted to see more of that. But, um, but in that trip, you know, where I was translating, I was like, Lord, you know, I got to see more of this. And I got a call before I was, trans before I was invited to translate for them, uh, for somebody, from somebody of my church. And uh, this person said, Half, I see you working with this American ministry, and God's going to open up a door for you and just say yes. And you go and you take the chance and you, you know, you, whatever God opens up for you, say yes. And then after that trip, you know, Randy and his um, uh, international vice president called Tom Rutolo, they invited me to work with them for Global Awakening, you know, working in Brazil. And I was like, yes, Lord, that's the chance that I wanted because then I get to see the miracles mm -hmm. more and more often. And then, but God really took me up only beyond what I asked or prayed for because I just, I wanted to see the miracles and God started to use me to, you know, like to pray for people, you know. I was starting to get used to pray for people and see the miracles happening uh, 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 tell, through my tell hands. Tell me some of the ones you started seeing with your own hands laying Deaf people. people being healed, you know, like I, I, and I had, I loved it. In the year of 2003, I went to uh, Ghana with Gary mm -hmm. Oates. And um, he's also now, Gary, one of my mentors, you know. Well, Gary Oates we had on the show, and boy, does he pack a miracle. Yes, for Gary is also one of my mentors. And, uh, and uh, so we went to Ghana, Africa, and there I had my first experience with, with the supernatural, you know. Before that trip, I was so hungry for God. I went on my, 40, uh, my first 40 day fast, and I was really pressing to see God, in, you know, in the supernatural realm. You know, I heard Gary's testimony that stirred up such a hungry mm -hmm. in my heart. I was like, Lord, you know, if there are men in this face of this, you know, in this earth that see you and see your face, you know, I, I believe because you're a good father, you don't have like special children, you know. I believe that if we ask, we shall receive and I do want to see you too. So, um, so one of Gary's meetings, Ghana, in one of his meetings, I was just... Hit by the power of God, I, I was knocked on the floor. For those that don't understand, what do you mean by hit by the power of God? Well, it's... <laughs> if you were talking to some of your friends okay. that are Catholic and have not seen this sort mm -hmm. of thing, how would you describe it? Okay, well, I think I would say uh, there was this pressure, you know, that came, like, on me, and, and, and I felt like so much power coming on me, like in my legs started like to shake, and my body started to shake. I couldn't control my body, you know, it was something like, I don't know, like I just could not control what was happening with my body. So I went to the floor, I just fell. You, you know what, I have an idea mm -hmm. that we can explain that to you. We have a miracle cam of a woman that was minding her own business, 
and at a meeting, uh, I believe it was in Brazil, mm -hmm. and, and she, it was Gary Oates' daughter had what's known as a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the word was her name. And the mm -hmm. word was not only her name, but her age. Mm -hmm. And so she knew it was her. She had this condition, a horrible gastritis condition. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, even though this is with subtitles, the presence of God is so strong, you're going to, some backs are going to be healed, but in, in your hips, you're, you're going to receive uh, a, a presence of God for mm -hmm. healing, and you're going to feel what Hoffa felt. Let's go to that clip with, uh, with Raquel. No caminho, Deus tinha me falado que queria me curar e eu falei, ah, tá bom Deus, hum, tá bom, mais uma vez eu vou orar por isso e ah, vou ficar frustrada de novo, mas tudo bem, eu vou orar, vou aceitar a sua cura e, e, eu, e eu, eu só que eu falei assim, Deus, você tem que ser muito específico porque senão eu não vou acreditar. E quando os ministros foram lá na frente é, dar as palavras de conhecimento, é, eu não queria que eles falassem sobre dor porque eu não estava sentindo dor naquela hora. Mas na terceira palavra, ou quarta palavra de conhecimento, a Trina, que é da equipe do Global Awakening, olhou, pegou o microfone e falou, Raquel, 23 anos, hoje Deus quer te curar. Teu nome é Raquel, ou Rachel, você tem 23 anos e Deus quer te curar hoje à noite. Até o Randy Clark ficou olhando assim, oh, ela existe. E então a Trina veio orar comigo. E eu só falei pra ela que eu tinha um problema é, com hormônios, mas Deus foi é, revelando pra ela que eu tinha muita ansiedade e ela tocou na minha cabeça <risos> e falou é, Deus, eu curo essa ansiedade agora eu falei, nossa, eu, Deus realmente está revelando porque ela está falando da ansiedade e de repente ela tocou no meu estômago e falou e eu curo essa gastrite agora em nome de Jesus eu falei, oh, Trina como você sabe disso? Só pode ser Deus ela, você tinha alguma coisa no estômago? eu falei, sim, eu tinha gastrite dela oh, então vamos orar e a gente orou, orou e eu sentia Deus me curando curando meu sangue é, dos meus hormônios, não arranjo mais os dentes e não tenho mais gastrite, eu não podia tomar leite nem refrigerante e agora estou fazendo todas essas coisas. E... Now, I believe that many of you experience the presence of God. Many of you have already had miracles. I want you to send in a one to three minute home video of the miracle in your life. Go to our webpage, you'll find out about it. But I, we're going to be back in a moment and you're going to find out about this encounter that Hoffa had that literally took her out of this realm. We'll be right back. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Hoffa Silvera. Now, Hoffa is a young woman that has a hunger for God. And she went to Ghana with the Gary Oates ministry. She had been fasting for 40 days and all of a sudden the presence of God came upon her. And what happened next? Well, I was telling you that I felt like this pressure coming on my body and I fell on the floor. And that was the first time that I was touched by God that way because I was, sh I was shaking violently. And I never thought that God would touch somebody you know, like that kind of, you know, violent way. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I was putting, really, I was putting God into a box and telling God, okay, this way, Lord, you do with me, this way you don't do with me. But I was glad that God did that way because... Who I, are we to put God <laughs> into know, a box? I know. We're really a prideful group called uh, humans, aren't we? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, uh, so I was so glad that God did that to me because I needed to be set free from that. And uh, so I was on the floor and I started to shake violently. And I heard like, uh, the, the, it was like a storm was going on, but I knew like we were in a, such a warm place, you know, like there was no storm happening, but I heard like a thunder noise and lightning for the first time. And I was conscious, I heard for the second time, I was still conscious. When I heard for the third time, like I felt like literally like my spirit was leaving my body. And the only thing I saw was like this gate, you know, like opening in front of me. 
and like there were just huge gates and like I went to this place where there's so much like kind of lightning noises and thunders and like and like there's this angelica being you know like on my right but I couldn't see his face because I didn't look the only thing I could look was just through the throne of God and I saw the throne of God in front of me and I saw God but I couldn't see his face and he was kind of far away from me and somehow we're talking, but it was just thoughts, you know, like I wasn't opening my mouth or saying any words, but were just thoughts. And, you know, and God was saying to me, come. And I, I was telling him, I want to get there, Lord, but I can't because there was such a pressure. There was so much, I don't know, the, it was so heavy, you know, the place was just, it was just anything. I don't know that we don't see this here. It's just hard to explain. And I wanted to get closer to God, but I couldn't. You know, and I was also afraid of the supernatural. And that was such a short period of time that, you know, that I was there. Mm -hmm. But then uh, the people that were in the church, they say that was for hours because they carried me out of the meeting to the bus, out did of the you bus know, did to you the hotel. Did you know you were being carried out? No, because after the, like I told you, after the third, like, thunder noise, I, I was gone. I was hmm. out of my body. And after like several hours, I came to my body, you know, and then, and I was, and I talked to Gary, I was like, Gary, I think I failed because I was close to the throne of God and I couldn't get closer because I was afraid of the supernatural. So Gary, you know, so he was like, Half, I think you should pray and ask, tell the Lord that you are repenting of that and tell God that you want to see him. You know, you're not, you don't want to be scared of the supernatural. So I prayed again and the next day, you know, I was like, oh, Lord, please, you know, you know how hungry I'm for you. You know, I'm, I was fasting. I have one more of you, you know. I'm sorry, Lord, that I was, you know, that I was afraid. Please give me another chance. So the next day, an angel came, you know, to my room, and he came on my right side. And as soon as he came, like, I felt this tingling feeling on my right arm. And I felt like as, as you pick a tissue, like, he was, like, mm -hmm. pulling my spirit out of my body like this. And I started to go up. And as I started to go up, I was scared again, <laughs> believe it or not. And I, I believe said, it. <laughs> and I said, no, God, I'm not ready, you know. And then, like, I went back to my body again. And, uh, and then I repented again that day. Oh, it's a, it's a long story, but making it short, I had, like, several encounters with God where, you know, like, I was going up and I felt scary and I came back. Until, until the point that I wasn't scared of the supernatural anymore and I was able to see God and also not only go there, but having God coming to me, you know, here in earth. Because, you know, I believe that we were, you know, we were created to fellow, you know, to have fellowship with God. So we are, you know, we're created to uh, well, be able to go there and yeah. also to have his visitations here. Well, you know what the bottom line is? Mm -hmm. Anyone can have an experience but I want to know what was the fruit of that experience. Mm -hmm. uh, afterward, you started praying for people. What did you see? Well, right after this first experience, what I said that I was shaking violently, mm -hmm. uh, the next day we were in a kind of outreach meeting and uh, there was a couple, there was a lot of children there in Ghana, Africa. There were, uh, they were definite. They were deaf and they were, the reason why they were deaf was because of malaria. And, uh, and I had a lot of love and compassion for them. I really felt compassion for those kids. And I was like, oh, Lord, you know, help me. Help me to have enough faith to pray for them and, and, and use me to do something, Lord. So, but I, I, as a result of that experience, you know, the power of God was so strong in my life that the only thing I had to do with three kids, you know, that night was just to place my finger inside their ears. And I said, be healed in Jesus' name. And the three kids were healed of deafness that night. What did you that know. do for you? Oh, <laughs> I know what it did God. for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it changed my life because it was the first time that I prayed for somebody that was deaf and that person okay. was healed. We have a short period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, you went to a friend of mine mm -hmm. uh, in Mozambique Heidi. and you, uh, you prayed for, I believe it was a man. Tell me about him and how many people came to the Lord. Yeah, as well, first I saw Heidi preaching there right. and the way that Heidi preaches, she, I mean, she goes like, okay, do you guys want to see the power of God? Is anybody, is anybody here deaf or blind? Come mm -hmm. here, because we'll pray for you, get healed, and everybody else will see that, that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus heals. So as she preaching, she does that. I mean, I've seen her doing that. So the next day I was supposed to preach and we're doing outreach and there was about like 1,500, 2,000 people there that never knew about, that never heard about the name of Jesus. So we played the Passion of Christ movie, you know, and after that um, I got the mic and I started to preach and I was like, okay, I'm, I, I thought I can go bold and do the same thing that Heidi did, yes. but Lord, I need you to back me up and show your power to these people. And I really felt, you know, God, you know, told me, do it, you know, test me. So, um, 
So I was, I was like, is anybody deaf here? I want you to step forward, you know, come to the front. So this guy, this man, which was about 40 years old, came to the front. And uh, so he was deaf from both ears, of both ears. And he was deaf from birth. He came to the front and I, the same thing, you know, I, I would just, I just went like, Lord Jesus, you know, show your power, show to this people that you're the Messiah, that you're Jesus, the healer and son of God. And I told them, and be healed in Jesus name. And then he started like, I had an interpreter, even though they speak Portuguese, but they also spoke like Makua, the tribal language. And, and uh, so the interpreter was like interviewing him and he said he could hear. After that, then I asked, who in that tribe wanted to give their life to Jesus. And I believe, like if it wasn't 100%, I believe at least 90% of the people, you know, raised their hand and, and gave their life about to Jesus. About how many people would you say? Uh, about 15, 1,500 to 2,000 people. Did you hear this? She gave up a wonderful career in business, but 1,500 to 2,000 people because of one miracle turned their life over to God. This sounds abnormal to you, but I tell you this is normal and it's going to be getting more normal. The more you watch this program, you'll become normal. You are mm -hmm. abnormal right now, mm -hmm. but you are going to receive such an endowment of power by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Your faith is going to zoom just as Hoffa's has. All you have to do is surrender to God Repent of your sins. Tell God you're sorry for your sins. Believe the blood of Jesus has washed them clean. And then ask God in the name of Jesus to live inside of you. Become your Lord. Surrender to him. Make your life count. You have one life and then comes the judgment. It's not a fear. It's a want to. There is nothing, Hoffa, there is nothing to compare to the love of God. To That's experience right. it yourself. It's not a platitude. Right. It's n There's nothing to compare to experiencing God's love yourself. Do it now.